example, the top there in red? Um, so, Horak, Hor 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 24 Gardner Road. What's the That's an informal discussion about um, site up on 24 Gardner. Okay. Five Irving, an RDA or an NOI. Right. Hummerock issues. Do you have an for that? That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's from Lisa. Lisa. Really? <laughs> that's Lisa. Um, fence, um, debris in the wetland. Yeah, those were two letters that were sent. That's all that is. Okay. So can I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the agenda with that's the amended. amendments that Frank just read. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thanks. Um, so we can go, I guess we'll do those, some of those right now. Yeah, if you could do Mr. Hodorek maybe first. Sure. Okay. Mr. Hodorek, if you want to jump up to the table. Yeah. Thank you. I, I can just start. I know that um, there was a certificate of compliance, it appears, was issued a year or so ago. And um, Mr. Hodorek is in a butter to the property up on Gardner. And he was around for the hearings, and it didn't appear that some of the things that were agreed to in the hearings that went into the order were ever completed. So now the house is for sale, and um, he has some concerns about his property receiving water off of this property. So if you want to... And you say they do have a certificate of compliance? It seems that way, yeah. It does. It I'm, I'm having trouble believing that. There was, did they even file with us? Or am I in the wrong piece of property? Um, I'm at the end of Indian Trail Gardener. There are actually two issues. If I, and and the, the one that I think you're referring to we is, had an is on the other side. That. Yes. Okay, so go ahead. It's on the left side of this residence. Yes, that's a different issue. That's no, the uh, a separate issue. property owner from Cohasset that's trying to make a lot into All right, this I'm is sorry. a separate. So, so I am in the wrong spot. Yes. But, but not by far. Yeah, actually. very close. And I'm very, and I'm very yeah. familiar with that as well. But, but, okay. but to, not to waste your time. Sure. So in 2002, um, our neighbors um, filed for approval for an addition, modification to the house. And an addition and before the Conservation Commission, a um, orders of condition were submitted and um, and had been agreed to. And even at that time, I had written uh, to a doctor and Mrs. Adasi saying, we perfectly understand and support your request to modify your home, but the orders of condition called for the contours, once you're complete, the contours to be put back as closely as possible so that the water from the driveway, which was relocated, didn't go on our property. And, and I received back a letter, absolutely, we understand. And in fact, we were gonna put together some joint landscaping. Soon thereafter, I'm saying soon, of the year or the year after that, unfortunately, the family um, divorced and uh, Dr. Dossi left the house and since then it um, never the, the orders of condition were never met and I sent a letter once and and recently in fact about a year and a half ago uh, Mrs. Adasi came before the Conservation Commission to get approval for um, a new drainage uh, or septic system. And at that point in time, I submitted another letter that said, I certainly don't oppose to that, but I would really appreciate it if the orders of condition were finalized because we're getting, continuing to get runoff on the property. Then I found out that the house was on the market and I came in to say, geez, have the orders, you know, there are, un, there are orders of conditions that are mine, but I don't think have ever been met. And then that's when uh, Pat said that, in fact, a certificate of compliance had been issued. Hmm. When was it issued? Um, well, this letter is from EET from 2000, and this as-built plan are both from 2008. Well, There's um, a CSC was issued in May of 2012. Why was it done in 2012? The CSC? I mean, if we got a letter from EET in 2008, Right. So this four years later, a certificate was 
Yeah, there's some concerns listed on that one. So maybe in the in-between period, some of those things were completed and it might have taken a while and then things get put on hold. Hmm. But I didn't know if anybody re might have remembered some of the original. Did you say that they, this one at all. they, have they filed for a septic system on this house? I, they, I don't think they have recently. I do know that they did and it's in your file, I'm gonna say about 18 months ago. Did they install a septic system? No, because they withdrew the request before your committee when, our le when I submitted a letter saying, I certainly don't object to that either, but I would really like to get the orders of condition met. And then it was withdrawn. So more than likely, in order to sell this house, they're going to have to do a septic system. I would think, but I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. And <coughs> so they have to file to do that in this on this site it looks like with all the only question is how do they get the mm -hmm. approval so it it could, might just pass that's well, the scary can I ask thing a quick question here frank mm -hmm. so the crux of the issue here is that this existing gravel driveway that's listed on the plan is shedding water over onto your property correct and that was part of the original order of conditions to have it not do right. just that. That the okay. contours, once the construction yeah. was finished, that the okay. contours would be put back and there would be a swale of some kind that would be okay. on the abutters property, on their property. Have on you had a chance property. to go out there, Pat, and look at that? Um, I just rode by, but I was looking at the um, the septic filing. It says, you know, it shows the date when it opened and then it just said the project closed, but it, like you were saying, it doesn't appear that the work was done. So um, I wouldn't. You're saying we closed the hearing, or it looks like it says project closed in September of '08. So this is there an order? There's no order of conditions. No, well, there was. '08 wasn't the date for the septic system, though. At least not the recent one. I don't think was it. Um, looks like an an order was issued in 2008, and this file says. Septic. Oh, maybe. Um, but there's no COC and there's nothing else in here, so. Because it says in that closed. file, I, saw, I submitted a letter that, in fact, it was entered at that date. And I think the letter was dated. I am. I know. Okay, it's, 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 it's in the other file. It's yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah. So my only question is, is, is it possible to at least then try to get, as part of this process, to have someone look and see if the in fact the contours could be modified? Well, I know you can't be shedding water in your neighbor's yard. Yeah, we're complying well, with. Well, be careful yeah. because of the date and time. Like we didn't have a. Um, the uh, stormwater. stormwater piece in, in effect then. So I, I think we really should find out if, if a CFC has been issued or not. And if it hasn't been issued, we should send a yeah. letter. But not <coughs> on the septic. The CFC was issued on the um, addition. addition, concrete, driveway, garage, and grading. And what year was that issued? This was issued in 2012. This is the one from May 2012. But you just said the, the drive and the contour? Yep. And that's the letter from um, Bob Crawford. He, he met with the property owner before the CUC was issued. I just don't even yeah, understand. Well, the this. letter from Bob Crawford is dated July 11, 2008. I don't understand. So that. it's it It's well before. Right. So I'm just wondering why four years later a CFC was issued. Right. Um, and I, I don't recall the, this, yeah. to be honest with you. I mean, I was probably on. I was and whether much of that was done in the meantime, too. I, I mean, some of that stuff could have been taken care of. Right. <coughs> I mean, it was definitely serving in 2012. I just don't recall doing the. So a lot of times the CFCs don't amount to a lot either. 
See, I don't even remember that one. Is there another letter from Bob in 2012, or it's only in 2008? I think if the one you have is the only one. Okay. Do you have the letter? Not the one I wrote. Yeah, I, I have it right here. Oh, okay. okay yeah. I think the date, I forgot the date. Yours is also June of 2008. It was 2008. Your letter to, okay. to the commission is from 2000 in June, and then we have yeah. a letter in July from the engineer with a list of things that are not, um, that don't exactly, aren't exactly the same as the right. orders. So, So I presume that the orders were still open. Mm -hmm. And at some point, we could get them resolved. And then I found that, in fact, there was something. But I'm just surprised that we don't have some other correspondence in that folder mm -hmm. around 2012 that something precipitated finally issuing these orders. And, I, and I'm just surprised right. we don't have that. Right. Or any information on whether the septic was done or not done? I don't think it was. Just I mean, I, I would have known the project. I mean, you know, it's a big... And the filing for the septic was 2012? No, 2008. 2008. That's when my letter was predicated on saying, geez, if you're going to review that, would you at least then review also can, the open orders of condition? Can you, maybe one way to get at that, Pat, a little bit would be to check with the Board of Health and see whether or not um, they permitted the septic system. Okay. Uh, Greg, Greg Morris for the record. Um, the septic was, was permitted. It's scheduled to be installed next month. Oh. I know that. Hmm. Okay. It's hard. It's like that. Did you, are you the engineer for that? Or? My, my father's gonna be the installer at that end. Okay, but you didn't design the system. No. Designed by Bill Spath. Yeah, Spath. Okay. So did you okay. So that's that's good news because there's an open order. Okay. So so what that means is that they're still going to have to come back for a certificate of compliance for the septic system. And before they sell. So we would have another opportunity to take a look at these pieces. But it concerns me that we did issue a CFC for some of these pieces and said that it was okay. So I'm not exactly sure that we can address all those things, but hopefully we can figure out where some of them are. Yeah, I would hope that there'd be some way to adjust that. Um, without being, without trading to be an issue. Mm -hmm. When did, um, just wonder, this, this is EET for stuff back in 2008, but, but Phil Spath was the engineer that designed the system? Two separate orders of conditions, yeah. And when was that? What was the date on that? On Phil's plan? Yeah. It might be Phil's company, but I don't know the name of it. In here somewhere. Thank you. Here's another engineering firm. Bob Crawford. Oh, Rosano Davis. Because he was February, working. February 2008. So that's when he was working. Okay. <coughs> so they they don't last that long. Don't you have to go back and renew? With the Permit Extension Act, I think it's still valid. Even for septic? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you for your time. We'll, uh, we'll try to look a little further. Thank you. When it comes back up in front of the Is there anybody in the audience the with any other information other than Mr. Morse? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Have a Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Right. Do, you, right. do we have right. contact him? I guess yeah. we do here. We have an email address. Sure. Yep. For you and a phone number. So yep. good enough. Thank you. Thank you. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, so I won't. Thank you. So teach me.
I wouldn't think so. Yeah, okay. okay. Unless, unless when the CFC was issued, if the CFC was issued with a letter or some information from an engineer, and we accepted that, and then it wasn't done correctly. Accurate, yeah. Then right. I would think that there'd okay. be something to look at. Okay. But typically, we try to look at those. But yeah. don't forget the timing, because. I, I know. Yeah, we might have been without somebody well, at the time. Well, yeah. that two years, that was a crazy time. Yeah. Right. For us in Asia, right? And we have a quick informal one. Too. Okay. Um, this is Irving Road? Yes. Yep. Number five, Irving. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Maxwell. I'm here on behalf of the homeowner, Tom Serrani. We actually uh, came before you, I believe, last September uh, in regards to the same project. Uh, what he's hoping to do is to put a farmer's porch onto the existing house. There are already two decks in place. Dylan right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Right off the Julian Street Bridge. He's right on, right next to the water. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Um, is that Irving Lane? Or, I yeah. mean, Irving, Irving Road. Road. I think it's Irving Road. It's Irving the next. Road. The next one down from Julian Street. We have an Irving. It's Road. Irving Street. Irving Street. Yeah. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> <laughs> Irving Road is off of Hathaway. Yeah. Road. That's why I was Irving Street. Go over Julian. Take a right. Okay. Your first right. First right. Uh, so I didn't know we had wetlands up on Irving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's plenty of them here. Um, so what he's proposing to do is to put a farmer's porch, just a roof enclosure on top of a deck in the front of the house. There already is an existing deck, probably about five feet out by about six feet wide. And that is on the driveway side. On the river side, there's probably about a 12 by 14 deck that's pre-existing and that would stay. And what he's hoping to do is marry the two together by wrapping the farmer's porch around and tying into the existing deck. The roof around. Correct, as well as the deck itself. We're hoping to continue the deck that already exists on the oh, front, right. about five feet out, six feet out across, and he wants to carry it the whole length of the front of the house and then tie it into the existing deck on the side. Excuse me, the, the front of the house is on the street, am I correct? The front of the house yeah. faces the street, and then the side that uh, he side would like to... It's on the bank, yes. ne near, next to the bank right to the river. Right next to the river, exactly. But there is a pre-existing deck there, and yep. we're just hoping to tie it into that. I do have some drawings here. Yeah, I believe that Pat did a site inspection and maybe a member or two of the board yeah, went I think as well. Paul and Rich. I was there yesterday, yeah. yeah. I was there today. Oh. And okay, I'm not was, familiar with it at all. Yeah, there was some information on the new type of posts you were proposing that you were going to check with Neil. Yeah, why don't we just Sorry, take I, a quick look at, is there a plot plan or is it an architect's plan? I have architectural. So do we know how close this is to the resource areas? Yeah, we do. Here's the river right here. The house is right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to be sad to me. <laughs> and the ocean's over here. No, the ocean's over here. it's on the river. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this will be the front of the house that faces the street. Okay. And what he's proposing to do, there is a five by six deck out here now, and there is an existing deck here, as you can see. And what he wants to do is carry the roof line around, mm -hmm. as well as the deck itself. Continue the existing deck. So there's no deck here There at is all. an existing deck at the front door. It's about just a five by six platform. All right, but it's just a platform. Correct. So, but you, and you want to add a full Correct. porch. Correct, he wants to add from the five by six to the end of the house here, carry it over to here, and tie it into the but the foot, so what, the, how does the footprint change? Leave it. Yeah. This will all be brand new, though. Well, oh, okay. Okay. Right, exactly. The existing gear is proposing to continue. Right Thank now, there's you. a set of steps yeah. yep. okay. right here. But, so what they'd like to add is an eight by, I don't know. It's probably about uh, six feet out. And oh, six feet. Feet. here, where's the resource area? Right here. Along the river there. Right here. Right. Here's the okay. river right here. here. All right. And this it's right, right on top. Right. Here's, here's the river here. Yeah. 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 We did come. You were here. Yeah. 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 And what and happened what to that? We yeah. Well, we were waiting on our site inspection, and then it kind of fell away with the weather, and then uh, obviously it's getting a little nicer out now. So we're so Yeah, you're working away there now. Uh, no, I mean, Somebody is. Someone doing some interior. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. there was a, a chimney guy and an electrician there today. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I believe he's having some interior work done. Basically, with those places, there's really no digging of the ground and blowing. Basically, take a little chunk out of the top and then you 
the pins in. So it does have the proper the upload to the that support the deck. I'm actually going to be able to tomorrow morning. I'd only be guessing from the seeing, the seeing it. It, it is built yeah, up. I've seen it's about these advertising feet, feet, feet never go in the river. Pretty cool. It's yeah. Nice it's good. Just take a jack and it's probably five feet from there. there. So they're just less, less labor intensive to get them less in the ground? Less labor intensive, really no disturbance to the ground whatsoever. Uh, uh, you how close is the How close is the side deck to, right the, now, to the bank now? Uh, uh, um, I would say from the bank, probably 20, 25 feet. Really that far? I believe. Don't quote me on that. Actually, it does, it does measure that. Yeah, so maybe it's not as close to the surface by 200. It's all. It's all. Yeah. So the question is if it's an RDA or an NOI. I mean, it's, good to, it's not a. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I, mean, I guess it's really not encroaching any more than what pre existing, but. That's well, I, I, I would guess. I would argue that a little bit because you are extending it on the side of the river. Correct. I mean, basically, from the footprint that is existing, though, yeah. you know, I, I can, I'm sure that I can talk to him having not gone any further than the existing deck. From the existing deck, how how much is this? Are you proposing to go well, out? Yeah, in theory, it's not going to go any further out than the existing deck. This really does not depict what's up. Okay, there. so from from the foundation here out to the existing deck. The existing deck is. How deep is that? Uh, the scale of the probe is 12 feet. And we're not proposing to go all that far. What he's hoping, this doesn't really depict that this is a better rendering of what's actually in the field. The deck itself is actually back here. If they were to file an NOI, the question would be is what? To find out if it had to become a. a if they filed an RDA, then the question. As to whether it's you're looking for a negative just to see if it's worked, it's done without any impact. So if you're putting in saw to it, like if it was foundation or something like that, I wouldn't even no, send do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, basically, say, these poles just get driven in on right. an angle, and that's it. You just take a small Well, I'll tell you, I, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never seen this. We, what we're going to wind up with is a roof, a deck, and a roof adjacent to this piece. And the only difference is the type of footing. Essentially, that now we're asking the question: because of this less invasive footing, do we not have an NOI? Yeah, there's more lot coverage because of the roof. Right. Yeah, right. you got the roof. Right. 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 Yeah. So that's why it was. Changes that's why I brought it in. And this was um, Paul went out, and this was his comment. He had visited. Oh, I thought that was good, but that was. No, I, I, I confused you yesterday. Resource okay. area, I would think it would have. So, Paul, yeah, Paul's comment on this is deck on sauna tubes may be possible towards driveway, no closer to river, needs an NOI. That's what I would think. Okay. I think that the work, regardless of how you're going to support it, mm -hmm. is would need a notice of the And you can file an IDA and find out that you need an NOI, or you can just cut right. I mean, Obviously, it would be a more favorable if we went the other direction, and then the end result would be like that. Right. I mean, that's the risk that you take with, with file and an RDA, is that you go through that process only to be told that you need to. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, you can't uh, predict the future, but you would assume really like how yeah. you yeah. I, I would say so. Yeah. I would say, give it, when you're close <laughs> to the river, it's not like you're a good distance away. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there are some pre existing things out there, but we are increasing the roof size because there is no roof on there whatsoever. Right. We are then you're going to have the runoff. And, and all that stuff. So. Yep. Yeah. And part of that process with the NOI is that we have an opportunity to make sure, like, silk stuff is in place and all that. So, I agree with you. Okay? Yep. I appreciate it. Thank okay. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Do you, wanna, um, do you have an extra one of those plans? Yeah, I don't, but I can certainly drop them up tomorrow. Yeah, that extra one of those folders? Uh, the ones with the, with the posts? All right. Just it would. No, I will make sure the it wouldn't be bad to have a note or something in this for this discussion. That's. Uh, yeah. These are, are going to come up more often. Pretty. And did Neil look at it today? I have to meet with him again tomorrow. Oh, okay. Basically, so that if it met the criteria, which it meets, then he has no problem. But it meets the upload code. It meets the uh, structural weight. Oh, sorry. 
Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you can certainly put a roof over a deck, but then it has sideline issues and stuff like that, setback issues and all that sort of thing. So he also has to meet not only our issues, but with the building department. Okay. So the footprint to get closer to a reason. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, that would be my, well, that's what Paul said too. Yeah, same thing. I don't mind it on the street. Sean's up. So Town of Situate, Surfside Road, Van Hill Road, Musquashkit Stone Barrier. Good evening. Good evening. Sean McCarthy with the engineering department here in Situate. Um, we had a couple of breaches uh, in the storms last fall and winter uh, in the barrier at Musquashka Pond, the existing stone barrier um, that we'd like to replace uh, or, or fill. We've met with the coastal zone management uh, on site and what they've liked to see is us leave what has been pushed towards the squash pond and bring in new material to fill the holes. Don't reuse or don't pull the material back out of the squash pond and put it back on the barrier. They're saying the material by leaving it on the pond side will provide stability so that that doesn't continue to happen. Really? Hmm. Um, well, if it's washed in hydraulically and it's placed like that, they don't want to see it dug back up. I mean, it used to be that they would pull some of that back yeah, and put it on top. Yeah. Exactly. It, this isn't the first time that work's been done out there. Yeah. Um, I have yeah five or six previous records of them trying to shift the, the crown of that mound seaward. Um, and it keeps wanting to be pushed back in towards well, Musquash over the years. It was definitely a lot more towards the ocean than this now. Right. I mean, by a lot of yeah. Okay. Um, we visited a, a couple of suppliers for material, um, and we have contracted with um, Reed Materials, uh, part of AD Make Peace, um, who have plenty of material to provide for us. It's a rounded, clean stone. Uh, there's no sharp edges in the range of four to eight inches, uh, which is, matches the specs they've used in the past for previous repairs in the area. Um, but there are three locations. The plan happens to still be up on the wall there. One location at the Surfside end, one a little closer to Manlot Road, and one right at the Manlot Road extension. Oh, I was going to ask you. I live on each beach, <laughs> so yeah. I was going to ask you about that other that other one that <coughs> came over too. So, uh, Sean, you were going to originally try a small area and then. Are you guys still planning on doing that? Or are you just going to go for the whole thing? Uh, I think it's based on money um, right now. Um, we're going to wait until next month at town meeting and have the money appropriated. Um, we have contracted with somebody. We do have a ton price. Um, I'm not sure how much they're going to ask for at town meeting. To I mean, we're going to spread it as far as we can and fill the holes as best we can with what we have and what we can afford. I remember at one time talking to Kevin, I thought he said that you guys had like 25000 to do a, a section and then you were going to see if you could get more funding. But So you haven't done any yet? Correct. Correct. That was in response to get out there um, emergency, um, mm -hmm. try to fill them up and then as the weather started to settle down, we, we put out a contract for a larger amount. Um, we went to a couple of pits to be sure they had enough volume or a quantity of material ready to go, ready to be trucked in, and uh, now it's taken a permitted approach, so to speak. We didn't rush out there to, to do it because uh, the weather's changing. You had a couple of buckets of those stones next door, right? We do. From the you, couple you of the different... You want to go grab those? And we'll <laughs> <laughs> I think Pat saw them. <laughs> I haven't seen them. Yeah. Pat's asked him three times already in the hall to go get them. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you bring them in one at a time, one stone at a time. <laughs> 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 any, have some no, I don't have any questions. Good luck. Um, no, but some of the residents down there on the inside of Ms. are you know very what? concerned. They live and die by that wall. Literally, you know. Yeah. So and I got to actually read this because I forgot that Whoops. we were doing it. 
public? On March 19th, 6.30 p.m., the Sound Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Town of Situate DPW to repair an existing stone barrier at Musquashka Pond, Surfside Road to Man Hill Road, Situate. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Sorry. What are they concerned about? About not having it. So this is not having it. Yes, the this yeah. is one of those things. This is a good thing, right? They're yeah. responding they want to the citizens <laughs> and they're happy with it. Yeah. It's great. No questions it's for me. <laughs> Lisa? No questions. Pat, um, have you any other conversation with DEP? I mean, they're. <laughs> Well, we met with the coastal zone people out there, and we learned a lot about how the rocks that have been washed into the pond are going to help support this wall. And uh, DEP, I mean, it's been a long-standing project, and you know they just, as long as you file, do you have a number? Up with, did we get a yeah, number? Yeah, uh, I think we did. Yeah. Okay. We did. Okay. So yeah, they didn't have any comments on their letter. So, All right. I think they know it's a repair of an ongoing, you know, wall. All right. Okay. So. Rosemary? Could I ask, what is this new, this enhancement? <clears throat> what is its purpose? <clears throat> to repair storm damage. Going in. A couple of breaches, sections where the stone has washed towards the pond. Is it protecting something? Is it going to protect something? Sure, the homes on the other side of Musquashkit as well as Avenue Road, for that matter. They're back in 78, Hatherley Road was flooded. Uh, so this, ba this barrier beach essentially stretches from, on the north, from the end of Surfside Road, down to Egypt Beach Parking Lot, is that section of, of barrier beach. Correct. It's continuous. Barrier Beach, and there's a couple of sections that have washed out almost down, not at sea level, but at a high tide, they're pretty darn near. You can see the right. Oh, they're going through it. Chain. They are going through it, high tide. Right. On the bigger high tide. And this is town property? This is on town property. And Musquashka Pond, in back of that, on Musquashka Pond, there are a lot of low lying houses in that whole estuary. Mm. So, um, Apparently the DPW feels that that's an important place to do. I, I don't disagree. It's, it's one of many that need attention. Yeah. One of the other things that come up too is could you use the large boulders and put them out there and they discouraged that and they said no, if you want to do cobble. And I think for individual homeowners and in other parts of the town, I think you could go through and get that permitted. Um, for no, cobble and bags. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's like to sea walls and protect them. Right, right. Houses. Yeah, the, but in they this won't, case it was. In a, on, a, on a barrier beach situation, they're saying sea walls are not, it's not a revetment, essentially, and it's not a dune, it's not sand. So it's it's an attempt to deal with a cobble beach. Right. Um, so I, I think if this, if this was a sand dune, then it would probably be choir logs, sand, dune grass, that sort of thing, if it was, a revetment area, then to be building or rebuilding a seawall, but it's a cobble beach, and so that's the methodology for letting it move. Mm -hmm. It's all moving in. <laughs> <laughs> you show me where it moves back out, and I'll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shocked. Um, anybody else in the audience? Oh. I make the motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck with that. Do we have, Pat, with, with that for our orders, do we have, Sean, do we have any methods, do we have like methods of transport and stuff like that? Have you worked out some of that with, um, with Pat? Like, uh, I assume that you're going to move this down the beach with like a wheel loader or an all-terrain gun truck or something yeah, like that? Yeah, front end loaders are what we've priced out um, in terms of getting the material out. Um, I did review some of the contracts from the past. It was done the same way. Uh, the trailers drop it, the loader shuttles it, and the dozer grades it. Because we would have a concern that it didn't further degrade 
Right. But the beach, I mean, I think you, you'll have a pre-construction with that, and you guys will have to figure out how you're going to... Yeah, um, we've looked at the end, if you're coming in from Man Hill, um, Man Lot, Man Hill. Yeah. But we didn't um, talk about coming in from the other end. Are you going to do it all from the Man Hill end? Uh, I guess it depends on the weather. I, if we were in there a month ago, I wouldn't have backed trucks down Man Hill with nowhere to turn around and oh, yeah. ice and snow. And it's a narrow, steep roadway. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely would have brought them in from Surfside, which would have meant you had to shuttle it. Unfortunately, all the way to the other end. Mm. But I'm just wondering, and again, it's your project, but if we were, if this were not a town project, but a private person doing this, would want to know how they were going to get on and off the beach. And I mean, even with the revampment pieces, mm -hmm. um, that was the question. And we ran into a little bit of a problem over at Young's Boatyard a couple of years ago where the contractor chose a different route onto the beach than what we had approved. I don't know if you were around at that point, but almost across from Young's, when Northern was doing the seawall yeah, work. I wasn't involved with it. And they wound up, they were supposed to access the area in one place, and instead they wound up going over another and tearing up the, the dune. So not, I don't know which is the better process, but I'm almost wondering if to have less disturbance of that cobble piece, mm -hmm. Is there a reason that they can't like run down the beach at a lower tide and then and then put it because it's almost like that's more firmly packed. I, I don't know what the answer to this is, but from Gannett? No, no, no. If you if you let's say that you were able to get down Man Hill, yep, and dump at the bottom of Man Hill, stockpile it, and yep. and then ferry it down to these, which is quite a haul to the one that's down by Surfside. But if you choose to say use all-terrain dump trucks rather than loaders, yep. I'm just wondering if they're better off traveling. It's gonna. It's kind of hard to move a loader on top of that cobble. I mean, they just a little, little bit I know about it. They're gonna so they probably get turning. Yeah. You know. Yep. So would they be better off to travel on the beach side mm -hmm. and then put the material up? But I think that's something that we probably should talk about. A patch should talk yeah. about a pre-construction. Sure. It all seems yeah, well uh, intended, but. How are we going to do this without disturbing the beach? What DEP is saying is they don't want us to disturb the cobble that's already been placed I, naturally. Yep. So we want to minimize that, and you're going to be driving over some areas or, or around some areas that you're not filling. Right. So um, certainly we can put a, uh, an access plan together. I, I think it would be a good idea to be with Pat and at least think about it. Sure. And, yeah. and, and you very well on site might find out that we thought that was going to work, but the machines can't change. Yeah. yeah, they can't move on this. Or I mean, cobble's a tough thing to. I, I would imagine so. Yeah. To actually drive on. Um, and you'd probably want to stay down towards the water's edge. Well, that's what I'm honest with. Yeah. It's packed. That's what I'm wondering if it's maybe at tight. the base of that, but then somehow you got to get the material back up. Oh, right. On that, and I don't know how much. And then you do as well. There is from the high tide line to the well, you might. It's, it's, I know right. it's not in it, but it's close. Right. I think that's something, though, Pat, that you should be working with these guys on a little yeah. bit. I think Al might have been here too. One of the last times it was done, so he might have some ideas. Good. I don't think we ever put material like that on that beach that much. No. Yeah. Yeah. I know they've repaired this corner. I think yeah. most recently. Right. You know, but that six. they didn't have to go very far. It was just spilled Surf over. Right there. There. That's right. Um, it's a long distance, isn't it? Yeah. That's one road that goes behind. Of course, we just did yeah. Surfside, too, so Kevin will kill me if I <laughs> yeah. destroy the... No, my guess is you'll probably be going <laughs> with Man Hill, but, I mean, you really got to think about that, and then you guys ought to be talking and... Yeah, we can write that up and condition that for the next meeting when we when you vote. Okay. All right. I, I certainly don't want to discourage it, but I just yeah. think we need to be careful mm -hmm. and stay in touch with that piece of it, okay? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Great. Sure. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sure. Um, Moran, 46 Townway Extension Septic Tight Tank. Yeah. On March 19th, um, somebody here for that? 
19, 2014, 6.40 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Sarah Moran to install a septic tight tank at 46 Townway Extension Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. We've submitted a request for continuance on this project for the next scheduled meeting. But, uh, yeah. Um, we have a motion. So we're just going to continue it? Just got to open it and continue it. Yep. We opened it. So what are you putting up? Then it's next job. Oh, next job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I make a motion to continue um, 46 Town Way until April 2nd at 7 p.m. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, can, say that for me. Cubellus. Cubellus, thank you. On March 19, 2014, at 6 50 p.m., the Town Hall Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citric Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Leonard and Virginia Cubellus to build an addition of 55 Collier Road Situate, abutters, and other interested parties are invited to attend. Everybody see that that wants to be able to see it? Um, for the record, Gregory Morse, Morse Engineering. With me is the owner of the property and the applicant, Lennon, Virginia Cubellis. We're here for an NOI associated with an addition to an existing single family dwelling. Uh, we previously filed the project with the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a special permit because it is an expansion of an existing non conforming dwelling with respect to the front yard and side yard setbacks. The existing site located on the third cliff, you'll see the property line in bold, Collier Road here. It's a 7,500 square foot lot, 75 feet wide by 100 feet deep. The existing house shown here, uh, I also on this plan have shaded in the addition. Uh, the addition is relatively small compared to the existing house. It's approximately 12 by 15, located on the left side. You can see the bold lines here. Uh, it's a, a, surrounded by abutting residential properties, east and to the west and to the north. To the south, southeast, you have the Atlantic Ocean. And with respect to the Atlantic Ocean, you have land subject to coastal storm flowage shown in green. This property has a zone X, which is where all of the work is, which is above the 500 year flood plain. It has a zone AE at elevation 12 and a zone AO with a one foot depth. This line was, was delineated by a professional land surveyor based on the results of an on the ground land survey that we did at the property. Extending up from that land subject to coastal storm flowage is the next resource, the top of the coastal bank. So this is the addition. The top of the coastal it's bank we have shown here in red. DEP has issued a policy, policy 92-1, on how to delineate coastal banks. It's primarily the first observed break in the slope above the floodplain. Situate takes it one step further in their local regulations that it's the first observed natural break in the slope above the plane. This line here represents that, that break. I do note that the grading in the backyard is not natural. There has been fill material placed there over the years. It is maintained as a terraced lawn that terraces down to uh, the back of the property. It's not a natural earth and anything. Thirdly, this is within the 300 foot jurisdiction of the North River Commission. The North River itself is located in the southwesterly delineation of this project. This property here primarily overlooks the Atlantic Ocean, but the North River Commission in 1992 permitted a previous addition at this property and determined that the back line that I'm showing here is at 192 feet from the river. Their jurisdiction extends out 300 feet. So we do have a separate filing with the North River Commission. The 
project is entirely outside of the 200 foot riverfront protection area. The addition to the existing dwelling, you'll see that what we're doing is we're adding an addition on the left side of the house on the plan here as you look at it. It's primarily 12 feet off of the house. It's 15 feet in depth. It will be living space on the second floor, living space on the third floor. In the basement, we're proposing to use that area um, as storage, and we've extended out a foundation on the back of the house, which allows for increased storage. It also provides support for a deck above it. Uh, and you'll see that we're also proposing a second deck along the back of the house over an existing deck and over an existing concrete pad location. I have pictures, but I'll show you in a minute. It's a little hard to explain. Surrounding the limit of work, in Magenta, we have erosion control devices proposed as a mulch sock with a silk fence, erosion control barrier that wraps the down gradient limit of work. We've also proposed a pervious landscape patio on the side of the house. The pictures that I'll show you if you haven't had a chance to go to the site. This is standing in the back left corner of the property looking up toward the back of the house. Collier Road is behind the house. Uh, you'll see again that this back lawn here has a terraced effect. So the most conservative approach is to take the top of that terrace as your top of coastal bank, um, even though it's not a natural embankment. That's what we've depicted on the site plan as the coastal bank. This is more close up looking at the back of the house. You'll see that that area where I'm proposing the new deck is where the existing deck already is. There's an existing concrete patio underneath it. This is an existing storage way into the bottom of the house. You'll see that the deck extends out over that. There's an overhang. It's a little bit more clearly shown in this picture. With our proposed addition, our proposed addition comes out to just about that overhang where the existing structure is. And you'll see in here we have a stake. This is the approximate location of the corner of the addition coming off the left of the house. So all within you know, existing lawn areas. Uh, and I know you see, it, you see it looking this way. This is the abutter immediately to the, to the east, this property, number 53 Collier Road. And you can get a relation of where their house is with respect to the resource areas versus this house. Um, and subsequently looking to the southwest, you can see again the neighbor's house on this side. This, this house here that I'm working at, number 55, is one of the most landward houses out on Collier Road. Uh, we're not proposing any extensions out beyond what either of the neighbors have towards the resource. DEP had no comments in their review of this. Uh, there's no work proposed in a resource area. Uh, all of the work is in previous developed portions of the lot. We're not changing the drainage patterns. We're not changing the existing topography in the lawn areas behind the house. Uh, we'll turn it over for any questions you have. Okay. So um, how, how far from the top of the coastal bank is the foundation? Foundation is 20 feet from the top of the coastal bank. I think our bylaws say I can't find my page 37. They don't they don't have yeah. a specific distance in the bylaw. Yeah, I mean a resource area there's um, you know for an undisturbed resource area it'd be fifty feet off of a coastal bank. Um, when something's built, you know, who knows? Um, I think that the stability of the coastal bank is the big thing. So we try to encourage sauna tubes or something like that where it's possible rather than a foundation that could destabilize the bank. But remember a couple that we had on Gilson, 
there was questions of how close they could get to the bank, but we were talking about something that was a lot higher. And, um, no, I, I understand that. I don't, but I don't remember a rig. I remember just looking at it and saying, well, if we have the buffer zone. I um, know we had to be so many. It, that was an existing, and they were basically using the same footprint. I, mm. We're putting an addition. This is a new addition. Mm. I know there was major question down the street when that house was built with the how, how far they were from the coastal bank, a new house. Right. Mark Stewart. Right. So that's why I'm saying this is something new. This isn't, you know, putting up a new house in the existing footprint. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I've got to do some looking on that. That's just my uh, concern. Mm -hmm. Bill? We're adding, obviously, adding square footage to the house with the addition and the roofs, etc. But, Greg, to your point, we're not changing the drainage pattern. No. So, how does that happen that we add that much square footage, but it doesn't change the? We are, you're not changing the. We're not changing the patterns, the topography. Right now, oh, the entire. The pattern, right now, but the you are changing the amount. Right, right now the entire property slopes to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it will continue to do so, slope to the Atlantic Ocean, not to an abutting property. Um, there are no requirements for mitigation of rates or volumes to the ocean. And the size of the addition um, is deceiving because you see the patio that we have, the pervious patio. The addition itself is relatively <coughs> small, 15 by 12. I believe is what it scales out outside of what the existing house is. Um, it doesn't require a stormwater bylaw filing. It's under the thresholds. Okay, and for to reiterate this point, just from my own understanding, the perimeter is not getting any closer to the coastal. It's uh, top of the coastal bank because of the overhang, et cetera. It's, it's the the actual structure itself is getting about two feet closer, but you see where that overhang is. So I'm taking. The structure as the actual structure itself, we do have the overhang, you know, which sticks out so about a foot or so, so. Two feet in addition to that overhang. It, it comes out from here uh, about two feet. Let me just measure it on the site. <coughs> Is it two feet past the overhang? Yes, it's coming out three feet, and the overhang is a foot. So it's two feet down. Oh, it's okay. two feet from that point out. And then the existing deck is the line of the proposed deck mm -hmm. as well. There. So the bump out that's between the proposed deck and that set of stairs is going to have storage under it, but I um, right. On this picture here, this this acts as a storage, and that right above it. So you're continuing that. I have a floor plan just so you can get a general idea. All of the habitable space. Uh, that's not habitable space. It's not first floor. It's not second floor. That's jutting out. Uh, it's just the basement storage area. The habitable space is represented by this line right here, the proposed poured concrete foundation line that we have right there. That's set back twenty-eight feet. When you're saying a foundation, are you talking a slab or a We're poured talking foundation? We're talking for this for this portion of the the, the new section. This here, this will be full foundation. Stand up. Stand up. Right. Yeah, because this is a, a walkout basement. The grade is high enough on the front, and the backyard is yeah. lower, so it's a walkout across the back. There's no concrete walls across the back of it. And then there'll be two floors above it? Correct. So if you look at the 
the addition here, you see the, the foundation bump out here. Mm -hmm. Yet when you look at the first floor overlaying that, you see that the actual house here is pulled, <coughs> pulled back. That foundation does come out to under the deck. end up that's your foundation under it. The, the house line above it is running right through this location. Okay, so you're gonna continue the deck that's there. That would correct. So we're gonna take that deck and run okay. it across the back. Okay. That's helpful. Yeah. So we've got a just another another picture looking at the back of the house. Uh, this is the walkout level in the back with the extension of the deck around the house. Uh, the patio on the side with the stairs coming down. Uh, this would be a cross section looking this way at the house. Again, seeing that there's foundation here, even though the house isn't there, it's the portion of the deck supporting it. Okay. Who will we have to? Quick, I'm, pardon my ignorance here. Is there not already an addition on the side of the house? There, there is. There's a small bump out there that was built at some point. Okay, and so th that that's going to be replaced. Correct. With a larger. Correct. Okay. And it's going to extend down. So those circular stairs that are there now will be gone. Correct. right now. Okay. Lisa? I'm good. Pat? Um, Greg, I had a question on, hold on, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, on the existing two family, the two story, um, coming toward the yard from there, it's just going to be decked, there's no foundation in that, in the existing part of the house. So it's, the, right now there's a concrete slab, and so there's going to be sauna tubes in that area with a deck above it. Yeah, so right okay. along the, we're, we're keeping the existing back of the house yeah. as is, um, but we are adding new deck here and we will need uh, sauna tubes to support that. Okay. You know, that's, that's this existing deck here. Um, mm -hmm. We figure we're gonna replace the columns on this, put new sauna tube footings in to support that. And the, and the deck will be rebuilt as part of the project. But yeah, we may, be able to, we may be able to save the sauna tubes. The columns are going to stay in the same locations. So. Yeah, so nothing from the side of the house to the right. Uh, nothing changes, essentially. And as far as um, the natural heritage habitat, it seems to end at the high tide line. Um, and it kind of skirts around that whole area of Collier. So it must be related to plovers or some, you know, bird nesting area. So it didn't continue on to this property at all. No, it Just didn't. The yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The figure three in the NOI shows it running along the back property lines of all the properties here at Collier. So out again, where you have water features is where the natural heritage. And the other question on the fill, do you have any idea what it is? Because, uh, you know, a lot of times if there's bank instability, that's one of the concerns. It, it does look like it was an area that was filled and, and you know, yeah. terraced. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, that might make a difference, too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what fill material was there, it but I know that the lawn that's there now it isn't subject to any erosion. It doesn't. It doesn't, look like it doesn't, it. It doesn't wash like out or anything like no. that. So we're not changing anything in the lawn. Mm -hmm. it, so most of the work is toward the butter to the right as you're facing. Correct. It, and it's two stories. Correct. Um, is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this? So when, when we saw the elevations along with the addition, it looks like you're also really changing considerably the rest of the house as well. We'll be putting a uh, new roof. Um, the 
the existing four walls are pretty much staying the same, okay. uh, but we are changing the roof line. Um, and all this area is all already lawn or? Correct. Yeah. It's lawn or shrubbed. Yeah. The top right picture there shows it the best. Did you get any input from uh, North River Commission or have they just started to review the? We, we were surprised that we had to file with them because we yeah. face the Atlantic Ocean for the most part. But um, we do have a meeting scheduled with them for next week. I expect that we'll get approval based on my, my talks with Judy on the commission. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else want to jump in for a second? I'm just uncomfortable with the coastal bank, the top of the coastal bank. I, I don't, I feel as though I'm missing something. I guess, yeah. I guess that's the problem, I don't mean to interrupt, but as Greg pointed out, that's not a naturally occurring thing. I mean, oh, you, you have a cobble area in front of it. Yeah. Um, this isn't, you know, I don't know if you recall, but back when I got on earlier, we, we had sort of a little model of the way different, how to determine these banks. And it shows a series of slopes and flat areas to come up with a way to determine where that bank is. And it's not like a, boundary per se, so it's similar to delineating a wetland line. Someone's got to take a look at those slopes and then the model that the state has and then try to figure out where their particular site best matches that model. So it's not necessarily a simple, um, you know, here it is. Yeah, so but on, on that point, Frank, that policy I talked about, policy 92-1, these, the, these are the figures that you're talking about, and they talk about the different slopes as they come up um, in different scenarios with respect to the ocean. Right. And on most of the sites, immediately to the left and immediately to the right of this property, for example, they would fall into figure one, where they're less than 10 to 1 coming up from the ocean, and there is no top of bank immediately to the left or right. right. And in your bylaw, you know, is, is specific. It says that it does have to be naturally occurring. Um, and so this is how it plays out per the DEP policy, but right. the, the bylaw kind of precludes it. So it's kind of an awkward situation. I get it. I'm uncomfortable. Well, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's like what's to stop? Somebody in a, we, we don't have a buffer zone from the top of the coastal bank. What's to stop you from going up 20 more feet towards the coastal bank? I just, I don't know, like I said, I lost my page 37. It is in my book, and I just feel, feel as though I'm missing something that, I mean, what what is to stop them from going 20 more feet towards the coastal bank? If we don't say land subject to coastal storm flowage would be your next resource. The purposes of the bank are to supply sediment to coastal yeah. beaches and act as a vertical storm buffer. Um, this bank does not provide any sediment to the beaches. It's fully grassed. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. You've had those issues, especially right. with Stewart's, but right. you have an entirely different bank. And, and Stewart's was complicated by the fact that there was a seawall in front of it. Okay. I, I just And there's sort of, like, there's a cobble, there's a cobble area in front of this that moves a little bit. Okay. Yeah, no. So I wouldn't be encouraged if they were moving closer to the Ocean, but they're really, I mean, no, I understand they are they're not now. Two feet, stop they are by two feet. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I don't know, it doesn't seem as large as you can see. with a coastal bank in front of you. Well, I think that what you can think about is if you want some form of mitigation for being in that buffer zone. And if you think that, that that bank would be better protected with some sort of plantings or something else like that, 
um, the same as we would look for other folks to do when they're working in a buffer zone. If you feel like you can better protect that bank or that slope, essentially, if you think about that as being no different than someone that has a lawn that goes right to the edge of a wetland. Yeah. And they're looking to make an addition or something mm -hmm. like that. And we might say, well, that's fine, but we want to have some plantings or to get some protection from the buffer zone. I mean, I'm not quite sure that I'm the expert to know what would be better planted on that slope. But if, in my mind at least, that would be the, the thought that I would have, would be that would there be a way to, and we've done similar things right around the corner on Moreland where people were trying to yeah. build. And what we requested when they were doing a similar project is we asked them to do plantings. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the, the process that I would move towards. I, I don't know. I mean, I think if the construction of the addition was, instead of going to the side of the house, coming toward the bank, you know, it'd be a much greater issue, I think, if you're put it to the side, most of the work is no closer than what is currently there. Mm -hmm. But I agree if there's concerns about, yeah, yeah, you're right. If there's concerns about are we destabilizing it, that is that is what we have to be concerned about. I'm not real concerned about that being destabilized because it is already terrorist and it isn't, yeah. like right. you said, it's not like over on Second Cliff where it's right. Right. right down to the um, beach below. It's just does anybody, did anybody take any pictures of the abutting properties, like what those yeah. landscapes look like? Oh, no, not from the beach. Not side. from the abut abutters, no. I got that on the right. They're almost all generally kind of open lawns because this is open. this is walking out to the sand spit. Yeah. It's, right. You're walking right out onto it. Yeah. That's what... Barefooted, but you can't. Actually, the lawn is in really good condition. For yeah, it was. Yes, one yeah. that which surprised me. Well, if it, it's going to get the sun all day. Yeah. In that location. Yeah. If you want to maintain some consistency, what you've looked for in the past when yeah. someone's in the buffer zone some mitigation. is some mitigation. Um, Just take the light on top of that. That or natural things or something along that line. Well, I have two weeks to go out there and check out the other properties before we actually do orders on it. And anybody else can go out there too and see if we can come up with any type of mitigation. Well, I think you have to, you want to you better present say that one. Right. Well, I think the uh, sediment supply issue doesn't apply because there's like a big um, stone revetment group, you know, jetty uh, growing right off the side, so it, it's not taking the, the hits in supplying, which has been a big concern for a lot of the yeah. areas we have. I sure don't want any walls. Oh, yeah. We've already had some people do that. You've got a bank, and the, then it was built up, yes. Yeah, right. Right. Actually, it was well built up. Substantially, yeah. Um, you can see that it's rotating. Look at the. Yeah, yeah they trees, obviously haven't the trees had any problems. Yeah. Um, we'd, we'd be glad if you included a condition to ins include some salt tolerant plantings and grasses on that, on that embankment along the back of the property. Um, you know, I, yeah. I don't think that it's destabilized right now, but we'd certainly be willing to add those. Well, I think it'd be a, a, an enhancement, whether it's yep. wildlife. Um, well, I, what I realize it's most of its lawn that's been there. I think to remain consistent with what we've done with other projects, when folks have expanded in, in a buffer area, we've looked for some form of mitigation. Um, and I don't think that's inappropriate to do something like that. I think and you could come up with some good-looking salt tolerant plants that could be part of your landscape and sure. at the same time help that yeah. both the embankment and some environmental issues. Sure. Sure. So maybe you could add that 
is we'll put it in the orders and we can get a, some kind of plan from you. Does that seem reasonable? Yes. Okay. I've got nothing else. Anybody else? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rafferty, 135 River Street. <laughs> um. Hey, friend. Yes. No one really surprised me. This one, I know it's not my bit, but it did. But the zoning board next door. They got a gorgeous I don't know if they need I know that's not our gig. You know, they make their setbacks. Yeah. Which I was in. Yeah. 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 Now, most of them have been altered all the way around, but if we think about what we've done is we've worked our way around the cliff, we've looked for some plantings Must be nice. between the lawn and the... You know, the bank collapsing doesn't seem like it will, so you try to... Right. Yeah. Uh, on March 19th, 2014, at 6.40 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws, in section 30700, Town of Central for the Bylaws began the application of Sarah Moran to install. If I get the problem, I'm reading the wrong one. You want to read, read this one? That's please. the one that we've been um, we we going to continue. That one's continued April 2nd. This is, Rafferty. Rafferty. This is River Street. This is Raftery, yeah. right? River Street. Of David Rafferty. Raffer Raftery. 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 To raise and rebuild a dwelling at 135 River Street, Sid Street, Hummerock. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Hi, I'm uh, Dick Brockwood. I did the architectural work for uh, David and Paula Raftery. Uh, they couldn't make it here tonight. Um, being a barrier beach, we're going to want to raise our the, the uh, structure that is there. I could uh, put a brand new uh, dwelling there that was on pilings. Uh, this is the house that's there. Yeah. Yep. And. Uh, Right. And uh, here's just uh, so you know, the house kicks out a little bit, a little easier to see on there. It's just a blow up of the site plan that you have. Thank you. Okay, well, I have a word for me. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so what we're proposing to do is take down that house and build a uh, <coughs> two story structure there on wood pilings. Um, it's a uh, barrier beach. I am, um, it's, at present it's an 80 elevation 9, um, in that area on the flood plain. So we're proposing to put up top of piles at elevation 11.2. You gotta tear it down. So that's the new FEMA? No, it's not the new FEMA, but by today's standards, well, what I, um, if I went to the new FEMA, which we're discussing, what to do. I've done these in the past where, based on the regulation, the difference is really only, I'd have to be top of high elevation 13 to meet the new requirement. I think practically, practical wise, that's what we would do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the difference is, and actually, looking at that plan earlier, it's nine in the middle where most of the house is, but it's 10 in the front, 10 in the back, the septic's put in, so there's a little bit of a dip in there. I actually took some photos today because the last time I was there was a storm yep. and, nice. um, and realized that dip. So, you know, so I would probably at least be coming up to 12. So, in case the new maps, and I'm not sure what the status of those yeah, are. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, you know, so you're building for all the new maps? purposes, we would. Yes. Well, not on this. The difference really is only a foot. Once I realized that it's really not nine, it's really, if I leveled that lot, 
and just filled that hole right there. If you leveled that lot, you'd be, it'd be ten. in jail. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah, it dips, it dips. Maybe not jail, but it does take a It dips about. in the middle of foot. And, well, I have to, it's a cinder block foundation. We've got to take that out, that rubble out, which will actually make a little more of a depression. So we would bring in something to at least level the hole that's there. Yeah. But then the question comes, do you, you know, is it an issue based on that? You know, nothing would go towards anybody else. So maybe it becomes nine and a half mm -hmm. by the time we make it a workable. Uh, scenario. So it's level with the houses pretty much on either side. On one side there's a little bit of a burn with some plantings that goes back uh, and I suppose I would have to take a little more note on the topo. See the topo nine is pretty much like from there to there is nine. Mm -hmm. So if it was nine and a half and, and it didn't have a big dip in the middle mm -hmm. to retain water. I don't know anything about the history oh of uh, you know if water sits there. It's all <laughs> sand anyways. Uh, can't imagine that it really does. Hmm. And that's what it has right now for a foundation of cinder block. Yeah, foundation. cinder block. You know, probably two on the ground and rubber this, footing. This all going to be fine. Right? Yes, definitely on wood pile. So. Yeah. The barrier beams, so the septic's already the in. Brand new Title V mm -hmm. septic was put on the TV. Yes, the yes. Oh, yeah, it's on the inside of the street. And if you look at those other photos, the whole backyard is just. From oh, corner to corner, it's just where the new septic is in. It's this all is just sand and gravel. This one's good. Really, there were three or four others in a row that we should be good. Well, we, it would be, and maybe we do uh, some plantings if need be, but we yeah. haven't really discussed walkways or what we do. But we know it all has to be. Yeah, you're not going to decide. Pervious material. No. Pervious material. So we don't have a, any kind of a. No, I do not. All right. We will look at it. Something that we have more. Be in your orders to you know, run something like that path as far as some landing, but we have not that any When you take down the current house, would you be taking out the current pavement? Isn't there a uh, paved it's, drive? It's, it's, a, it's a bituminous uh, concrete. Right, yeah, right. As far as in the front. Mm. So. Right. I think we'll have something to discuss. Yeah. There are two or three other houses down that way that could use the same treatment. Mm -hmm. This house is low. Yes, it's very low. Yeah, really low. Yeah. That's a low spot anyway. Very low. Uh, Dick, was Neil pushing to go up the extra foot when you spoke with building, or is it? I they, have not. I was okay. my first stop. Oh. Okay, so we have an application for zoning. Um, I meet all the, well, we're non conforming in the front by uh, about four feet. If I was 30 uh, yeah. feet back, this house would be conforming. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's why uh, I'm only going to zoning for that reason, because I'm uh, doing more than 20% expansion of yeah. the non conforming structure. But I really would have the right to bring that house back four feet and build the two and a half story because I would meet all the setbacks. Yeah. Because I'm 20 rear and eight on the side. Yeah. I was just wondering how he's addressing the homes that we know are going to be out of compliance with the new maps. I, I have yeah. 15 or 20 jobs in my office that we're all like, well, what do we do when yeah. we finally get yeah. approved? What do we build to? This is obviously, you know, looking at this, the difference of the reality of the lot's 10. I need two feet of freeboard. Yeah. So I have to put my piles at 12. Now the 13 is one more foot. I'm going to put them at the 13. Yeah. Um, as I say, I, this is just something I had done with the, with the owner some time ago just to show him the difference. And I really thought I was dealing with nine. But when I see that, how much of a depression it is, I would, I would make it at 12. And I'm not going to you know, fight the future, let's say. And uh, I'm not a gambler. So if it comes to 13, that's what we'll do. So we can. Okay, we'll the same. But I have other houses I'm doing in floodplains, like in our field and stuff, where you know, the, the new maps have them going up six feet. Oh, yeah. And we're ready to build the house, and it's like, so what do you do? You right. know, so we, what's the disposition of the reality of those flood zones? Yeah. Those are more of an issue than here on, on the beach. That's just a flood. Yeah. It sounds like if you build it according to the code at the time, 
be some kind of grandfathering. That's what we've been hearing at the meetings. But from what I heard, because uh, I had gone to the meetings when they, uh, the, when they had the uh, town meetings, uh, and basically they were saying grandfathering would go away at 20% per year. Well, now they're saying, though, if you, this recently in the last couple of weeks, if you build it and you followed all the rules at the time, there's going to be some kind of allowances for that. I don't know right. if it's a right. That was a pretty. If you're I'd be, I'd be really leery about yeah. right. saying yeah. what the heck they're going to do uh, one way or the other. And right. I, I think the and safe, so the worst scenario is 13. The so safest as as thing is to build it right, right. Right. Yeah. to what they're right. looking but, for. But I have other houses where it's you know a four or five foot difference in our what do we do. And right. That's a tough one. Because yeah, we're not doing those tonight. Back. So let's yeah. 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 So well, let's just say that it would be a 13. <laughs> that, that's what I'll do. Right. To meet the new proposed for zone maps okay. to cover us for that. I'd just like to okay. see a plan to come in when we um, just, you know. Well, maybe we should we'll put it in well, the orders let's go, that we're Yeah, let's go through the piece and then make some suggestions as to what you'd like to have there so that we, they have some guidelines okay. to start with. Bill? How much are we increasing the impervious surface? So we're leaving this well, cement seeds. my question I'd like to see it removed right well, I think that's a good point you're you're definitely increasing the roof area right mm -hmm. and maybe what do you think Jack? so I'm um, six I'm probably 10 by the 40 feet so uh, you know uh, 400 feet of my footprint and that asphalt is I'm trying to see the line of where it actually. Yeah, there's con there's over here yeah. and out front. But I think one of the, with the the ratio of what you might think about here's the footprint of the existing house. Right. Mm -hmm. And then here's the footprint of the new house. Right. So you're increasing your by about room. 10 feet wide by about 40 feet. So there's at least 400 square feet that I've increased on right. the footprint. That's my quick yep. math. So, so I think where, where's the concrete? I mean, the asphalt that's this got a line is there, and oh, I see it goes back. Yeah, it looks like it goes. There you go, right to there, to here, to the house, to the right house. there, and then over here. So there's a fair amount of asphalt. You can see it in the photograph. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's not in great shape. The, no, that's why I want to know why couldn't it come out with the house and put in a pervious material. Right. Yeah, I think that would be good compensation for the increased There's a thousand square feet. Right. Yeah. So it's, so it's a two to one. Yeah, it's about a two to one yeah. for what I'm increasing versus what's already there. Right. I've had no discussions with the, uh, you know, about what we're proposing to do. Uh, you, you know that we're trying to get rid of a lot of the pervious way we can and put in it. Um, uh, we and want I'm pervious, I should I'm say. I'm not even sure what shape that. It's not good. I was there yesterday. It's not good. I was looking at the grades when I was standing I'm there sorry. taking the photos, but no, that's that's not going to last when I can let my pile of right. and parts and all that anyway. So, so I, I mean, I would so like to see it replaced with you know, something pervious. Okay. And when, when we come back with a plan, you can say what it might be. Yeah. Lisa? I like, I like your idea. I think that, that's a good way to go. I'm having a good day. <laughs> Can I just ask you a question? Yes. You know you don't have a driveway. You just walk off of the curb. Oh, yeah. There's no, oh, I, there's yeah, no real I'm curb sure there, Penny. Yeah. Huh? There's no real curb there's there. There's not much of one. It's all well, kind it of broken up there, too. It's about, okay. it's about three inches. It's not much. Oh, it's that yeah. much. Yeah. They don't do curbs. Yeah, I do I think if the there's some more pervious and some plantings, I think yeah. that'd be yeah. great. There's really not much on the lot now. It's no. Just, yeah. I saw a native cedar tree on that picture. Yeah. It went on there. There is cedar and hummer. It's growing out of the yeah. foundation, but it's. Yeah. Uh, so could we put that in the order that will come with uh, a, a, a planting schedule to be approved? Because I, I kind of want to be able to know that we can move forward with this. The elevation 13 is fine, and then you know something that meets the board's approval can be presented ahead of time. Or are you? Anyone from the audience like to yeah. speak to this? Yeah. Um, yeah. How about yeah. <laughs> and through a big crowd tonight? Yeah. yeah, planting and addressing the impervious surface yeah. issue. Yeah. Well, not addressing. So I think what the guidelines were given is that we want the impervious surface for the addition of impervious surface for the house. Would like to see 
that asphalt removed and some sort of impervious surface. Not, not replaced with impervious. And then um, some plantings of grass and maybe some shrubbery that's salt tolerant kind of things. Right. The only other thing I'd be cautious of, you know, and, and you pointed it out, it does seem like there's a little bit of a slope there, so I'd be careful about how much fill um, right. goes back in. Because we don't want anything to go to it. You don't want to be shedding that. Right. Um, do we, is this less than 5,000? How big is the lot? 50 by 100? Uh, 5,000. Yeah. 50 yeah. by 100. I think so. Yeah. so it's probably does not meet the stormwater piece because you're not going to disturb the whole lot. So they're disturbing right. less than 5,000 square feet. So we don't do a stormwater, right. but we'd like to have that same sort of scenario follow where we're brought, you know, waters. We just, you heard it at the, we right, weren't yeah. here at the yeah. start of the meeting, yeah. but that's the thing that neighbors are concerned about. Motion, motion, girl. I make a motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. 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 All right, a um, couple of orders of conditions, and then we have um, just a whole bunch of discussion, All right? I make a motion that we accept the orders for 87 Maple, it's written. Did we get everything we wanted on that? Yeah. You had, yeah, the, you had the, a question on 37. Yeah, the access to get in there, and I think that Adam Brodsky was sent something by Carol this afternoon. Yeah. Sorry. They originally had said there's another way in when you were talking to them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, is that going to be good enough to get in there? I mean, initially, there's going to be a lot of work done. We want to make sure they can get in well, there. Well, they allow us to go in to monitor stuff while they're doing the work and things like that until it's all completed. I think that part would be easier than the yeah. ongoing later on down the road. Oh, and we'll just come in from... Um, okay. Because there'll be, there'll be probably a house or two after a while in there. Well, so. maybe one, but... Oh, she a driveway thing or yeah. something, yeah. Okay. All right. So I have a motion, a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then Connell, Great Rock Island. Yeah, I make a motion to accept those orders as written. Second. 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 Yeah, that pro uh, project really changed a lot when Josh got in there and worked with Greg Tansy. I think that one went well. I mean, yeah. uh, original stormwater was down in the flood zone, and, and there were a lot of enhancements to it. So well, I think he made some good recommendations. I think he's been a good asset in doing the stormwater piece. Yeah. The one condition we just thought of today was that uh, if they're going to go out to put the septic in in that low area, if they're going to be riding across the marsh, if that's the only way in, they have to come back to us. And I, I had a question on just the wording of it. I, I, I like I, it. Oh. I, I don't think we should even agree to that. Right, except for if, if they get into the site and they cannot get there from the top, you know, because they, 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 they did. Do it. Some way or the other, they can do it. Yeah. You don't, they want, can, you don't yeah. want to allow someone to travel over the marsh. Yeah. Um. So they, yeah, so they could, I mean, could they construct the septic without, because the first time they went in there, they went in with some kind of track thing, I think, probably through the marsh. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them do some pretty tricky septic systems, whether they have to literally um, lower something, convey uh, the material, uh, or, you know, bail it from one machine to another, uh, or something like that. They can do that. I, you, you don't want to. Yeah. Give so that's the thing: is they, if, if they, anything else, if they, they have, have to no come back way, to us. Do we, have a, do we have something in the order that says you can't travel over the marsh? Yes. Um, number forty-two. I just didn't like the wording because I got confused by it, but it specifically refers to not, you, they can't. They'd have to the come salt. back to they us if to they can't back. figure another way. And at that point, we could say, no, you have to figure another way to get out there. So it's because I didn't read that. So. Well, this is, not, this is the way it's worded. And I, yeah. I just got confused by the wording, but basically, it's they can't do anything, they, they have to come back to us if anything's. Yeah. Um, and then that includes. The adjacent salt it marsh, which to, to me seems obvious, but but you got to put it in. I know because they'll say you didn't right. say that. Because in the past, I think their first subdivision plan, they did do perk tests out there, and they were coming from the little rock island back to the mainland. So I, 
How does that work? Uh, oh, it was a while ago. It was a long time ago, but that's... The little rocks, uh, I mean, that's behind it. Yeah. They, they were coming in, and they came along the marsh. I guess oh, they nice. probably went in there and did it, so... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We need a second. Okay. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You had a couple, Frank, that you added about the uh, Aunt Carol. Carol. So we did Irving. <laughs> Hammerock um, issues. <laughs> what are Hammerock issues? Well, Lisa and I had spoken today and about getting some information out there and getting it to the post office. There's a lot of activity going on down there and. Um, the fact that they may not know about minor activity permits down there and are trying to do stuff without, I uh, hope I don't get caught. And if Informational. They, yeah, information. Yeah, Give yeah. more information rather than, you know, all right, we caught you. you there know. seems to be a lot of confusion about how you're supposed to do things. Well, we were told this, but we were told that. Then yeah. why not try to make it easier by... And I suggested why not post something at the post office because that seems to be where everybody reads yeah, everything. Let's go there. That's true. Yes. Don't we ask to do that? Just do it. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, well, the other thing that Lisa brought up is some people are, are taking the stones from their driveway where they park their cars and bringing it to the marsh side, which. You know, they, they were told you could put it on the beach. They probably thought, oh, what's the difference? Put it on the other side of the street. So we need to get the word out that that's not something that's allowed. So I'm just wondering, um, obviously we can post some things. In the I mean, website. We had, I mean, we had a meeting yeah. the other night at the Mount Hope building to discuss um, trails and open space yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, do you think that it would be attended if we had a meeting in Hamarok. Um, At the community center? What, yeah. Do you know when the community center opens, Rosemary? What community center? Oh, she on means down uh, by Julian Street. I Julian think. Street Bridge? That's not a community center. No. That's the South, South River Association. It's private. Oh, okay. We don't have a we'll have to pull the fire truck out and get some chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Will it be a tent? Rosemary, yeah. We actually have one, two. Well, Paul's not here tonight. Do you know what Paul's doing tonight? Speaking of that, he's on the radio on a talk, talk about show the, uh, talking about time. relationships. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, let's get that. <laughs> we'll pick uh, that up later. He doesn't watch the tape on this one. Yeah, he oh. says it'll be on YouTube. Uh, I'd like to call in. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Tell us what your secret is, Paul. <laughs> Can I just make a request sure. now or at the appropriate yeah. time? Right now. We've discussed this as, as in, the, in the past as a possible CRS outreach. Everyone is in, on the, in the coastal property or the floodplain in situ. It needs information on how to go about things. It's not just time. No, I know, but I'm wondering if it makes sense to do it in smaller groups. Um, I mean, we could certainly have a meeting and ask to use the community building or something else and similar to what Laura's done with the flood mitigation program and say Conservation Commission would like to hold a workshop meeting with folks to explain the minor activities to explain what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do I guess if I was a person that didn't want to know it I just wouldn't attend um, so you might be preaching to the choir it's the same as going to church you know how about if we mailed like, mailed the information? Um, well, we don't have a huge budget for that. But we um, have an annual mailing to all that people. If we put one insert in there with a couple of points, and then we could do that. Right, because we had talked about that, and then it wouldn't be an additional cost. Yeah. I mean. Right. Right. It does need. Yeah, but then, I mean, some folks, it's just like well you know what, I don't want to deal with it, and I'd rather just take care of it. And, and I know it's frustrating to watch it happen, and it's like, how do, how do we want to enforce it? Do, are we going to go down and actually stop some people from doing it? A lot of the activity takes place sometime between Friday afternoon and Monday, because they know that no one's it's not going to no. be yeah. well. There are There is one thing, there are two improvement associations in Humrock that do have web mailing lists. I'm sure would 
That would welcome a yeah. note. Okay. Who knows who would read it? I yeah. mean, I read it. I mean, the first phase has been to work with the contractors and, you know, talk to them a lot about what's allowed and what isn't allowed. And, and a lot of them are following every rule we ask. Um, but the individuals, people who move a in there. A lot of people can go rent a bobcat or a right. small machine and they're cleaning up. And, right. And I, I get it. I mean, they want right. to clean up the yard. They're, all the stone gets thrown over and stuff. All we want to do is make sure that they're following yeah. the rules. We don't want people dumping stuff out onto the South River or the marsh. Right. And we want to have some say in where they put it on the beach. And as much as we think our website is what everybody wants to go to, a lot of them don't. So. I, I don't okay. think anybody's happy with our website. I, I, can I just share, share a little information as far as just a few of the people that came over and visited me while I was cleaning up after my dog wanted to say, how come the town wants to tell us where to put the stones if they've dumped them in our driveway? And I said, well, I don't have an answer to that. I told him to call TPW. They gotta go back where they came from. Yeah, we're hoping to get, um, there's a police officer assigned to projects like this. I talked to the chief, and I think his name is Bates, Officer Bates, maybe, yeah, Sergeant mm -hmm. Bates. And uh, we were going to talk about, you know, in preparation of the summer, you know, this parking's an issue. And, you know, we're telling people you can't park on the dune, and they're saying you can't park on the street. So, you know, that's kind of in conflict with each other. So we're trying to get some some rules for the summer and also public works maybe we need some type of a fencing rope friends whatever along the the marsh side of central Ave. but i mean all these things are controversial but i think we're trying to treat you know individuals the same way and it gets you know without any rules and without any controls it's getting hard to do that so. well again what i mean richard said that there's a couple of websites we could send out somebody's going to have to draft something as to what you want to reinforce, you know, come up with the typical, what you feel are the typical violations. The most, the most frequent asked questions. And, and violations and say, here's the, here's the skinny on that. And uh, if you think that it's worthwhile to have something where some people might attend, you know, either to understand what the rules are or to voice their frustrations, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad to hear some of that. Um, you know, as long as they understand that we have limitations to what we can do. I mean, I just finished two days of code course stuff and listening to guys complain over new regulations, but yeah. that's what they are. The state's imposed them or yeah. the government's imposed them, whether they're energy pieces or structural pieces. We may not like building to them, but that's the new code. And mm -hmm. so you can gripe all you want, but here's, if you want to get it passed, mm -hmm. Or, or take your chances if you don't. So, I mean, it, it's it's not a bad thing. I mean, maybe some people would feel better if they had the opportunity to at least say, here's why right, this right. doesn't work for me. Yeah. We're like still the, gonna be limited yeah. to what we can say you can do or can't do, but. Yeah. It's like the parking lot issue down behind the post office there. You know, a lot of people came and talked about that area and what it's been used for and what it shouldn't be used for, and it was worthwhile to hear what everybody said. Right. So. How difficult is it to get word out, Richard, on these, uh, or Lisa, on these? Well, I'm a, member of, I'm a member of one of them, and I don't think it would be hard at all. I can certainly check it out. Yeah, because no we have the new policy on the minor activities permit that, you know. <coughs> Do you mind taking a stab at some of that? Um, I don't mind, but here, here's my question. If, if, it, if we don't reach everyone, you, 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 then how can, I mean, is there any tried and proven way to reach every residence? Because not every, I mean, not everybody has a post office box in Hummerock and stuff. I mean, you know, I think it was TV. so at least the then anymore. if everybody's been informed and then if they choose to no, do it their way, then at least um, yeah. they I, know I think, what they're doing is breaking I think you can rules. Do your, the best you can do to get it out it right. to a number of people. I don't think that you can think that you're going to touch base with everybody. And the fact of the matter is, whether or not everybody's read a law, there's certain laws about speeding, there's certain laws about, the, they're the law. 
and, and it's up to the person to know what those laws are. It's not like they have to be read each one of those laws. There's a rule and regulation that they need to follow regardless of whether someone's actually walked up and handed them a leaflet and said this is the rule. That they're supposed to follow it. And, and I think that you do your best to inform people so that you don't have folks breaking that. But, you know, people still rob banks. So <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it, I think one of the ways to get close to everybody, at least something in their hand, is with the CRS group, we do a mailing to everybody in the flood zone, which is everybody in Hamarok mm -hmm. and other communities. And, you know, we do them. Here's how you can save money in your insurance and that kind of stuff, which they welcome. And then we could put some other general information in yeah, the same that's a good envelope, idea. you know. And so that. When does that usually go out, Pat? Well, we did it last year in September, but we thought that you know maybe in the beginning of the season, May or we get June. Seasonal people, yeah. Yeah, and then another one in the fall, and reminding people that winter's a tough year, and you know here's what you need to do. Okay. So. So is, so people that don't uh, on their property have access to the beach, to re to return the cobble to the beach. I mean, I'm I'm happy to they let. They can take it to the take it or leave it. I'm happy to let them <laughs> go b on my property to return it to the the beach, but. Does it exist? Huh? Well, we not have access. Yes, it, on weekends yes. only. Straight back, there's a little house. Sorry, no, well, they exactly. not have no, that wasn't that too. wasn't nice. We diverged. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. If, if they if they have um if they have a, a seawall in front of multiple houses, they can't they can't directly go on to, and a lot of this comes down the road. They can go up to the, the opening, right? It's where yeah. it's always gone before in years past. Not always, but. Mm. That was the best solution. Right. Not what we're seeing. No, there's some proposed it. plans for that, and it's not sounding like it's going to go back on the beach. So no, now is the time. Because what's so. happening now is some people have come down, they've cleared off their driveways, and they're putting it in, and it's going on the marsh. Hmm. So, I mean. Uh, I think they do need a. And maybe that's the part that we need to figure out with somebody. Where, where is this stone all going to go? Yeah. I'm sorry, are you saying that they're not going to be allowed to put what's in front of their houses back on the beach? No, they are. Yes, but what the road. town is going to be doing with the um, widening of the road for the season, like right now, they are going to be doing some work. I don't think they're going to be putting it onto the beach. So, so where are they going to put it? I it doesn't sound like it's going to make it all the way to the beach, I don't think so. So somebody could clear their driveway off and then get a new load of cobble jumped on the driveway? No, no, I, I don't think there'd be anything more put on the driveway, but I, I in the past, the, a while ago, they used to spread it on the beach, bring it out on the beach and spread it. And I don't, I haven't heard that as being the plan, so. And they may just remove it and store it or stack it. Uh, but, uh, they keep, they're not supposed to, to I thought they weren't supposed to remove it. from the street. No, they're not going to take it off a of hummer. I mean, they may be using that lot at the end, or, you know. The parking lot next to the fire station? Where the old, um, used to be an old lifeguard station or some kind of station. Are we talking at the base of Fourth Cliff? Yeah. Yes, the yeah. B in the road. Right. Oh, at the B in the, the road. Town That's where it's that. been, right. That's and where it's it was been last piled year. up before, and then eventually they take and ferry it back down the beach. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the final step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's. I, <laughs> why don't you at least put together the things that you think are, are important that we could include in that? We'll work with Pat. Um, oh, you and Richard I, I can absolutely uh, help. Okay. Good luck with Paul. He's going to be like impossible <laughs> to yeah. talk to. Star now. Star of the day. <laughs> yeah. On relationships. Right. So, Rich, you and I will come up with mm -hmm. some questions. But I, I think Anything that's a great idea, like to Rachel, it. and I appreciate you willing to. Well, it's just I, I just see something that just keeps reoccurring and reoccurring, and I'm just hoping and to try well, to. Possibly with that, we can ask to speak to DPW, and and the town administrator, and say, you know, what can we do? We this is going to be a problem, and it puts people in violation. And how do we, how are we going to address it? So that people aren't stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, fence, debris, and wetland. 
fence and debris. Oh, there's um, two letters were sent out this week. One was the about the two little fences that are down on near the spit off of Collier. Uh, so I don't it's call them so little. No, one's low. They're not yeah, little. They're one's long. low and one's high, and they're both long. It's conflict, yeah. And uh, so letters were sent out to um, say it was done without a permit. It's in violation. There'll be an enforcement order if they're not taken out. And uh, there was a discussion at one point about you may be able to do this, but you've got to file for a permit, and you have to have someone who's knowledgeable in coastal, structural, and uh, the engineering stuff. Excuse me, friend. No, so. I have. Yeah. We have to look, but. There's the house and there's the fence. It's out in the marsh on the beach. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I can see it there. Yeah. Yeah. I have a picture too. Now. It's any better. In fact, it's smaller. Okay. I find it interesting. A few years ago, we had a meeting for the rocks. Before we should have filed. So we'll see how <laughs> if this letter doesn't get responded to within, you know, but before the next meeting, we'll follow okay. up with the enforcement order. The other one was a um, an end of a cul-de-sac that people are using as a leave dump area and brush dump area on uh, Brown. Uh, so we've kind of asked, we don't know who put it there, but we've asked for cooperation, please don't put any more there. And if you could help us by cleaning something up, that would be great. And if we, we don't get a call, we can follow up. You know, get out of it. All right, good, thank you. There, there's several, you would, you would want about the um, summer program. Yeah. The kids. Have we had any application from them at all yet? Do you know? We got a call. I wrote it down on there. You got to start to hustle those minor activities permits. How, how, do they have? Oh, the dirt bike, I mean, the gift? To pay for it. <laughs> That's, oh, I know. Need some income. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be available 8 to 12, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, June 30th, and July 16th. Mondays 8 and to 12. Monday what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And what was the date again, Carol? 6, June 30th to 7, 16th to July 16th. <coughs> and do they have what did we pay for that before? It was like twenty five. Didn't say anything last year. Didn't do anything. Hmm. Did we have a typical donation before that? Was it like a couple thousand bucks or something? I thought it was twelve. Yeah, I thought it was twelve hundred. Can you take a look and see, and then maybe we can put together a letter and send it to the TA and see if we can get the money for that. What is it? Just the special needs kids go down there and we give them some food. They didn't have any. No, oh, okay. They blocked your pellet, she said, so they're just going to do a drug fight. That's fine. They could use it. Are we paid to do it? Yeah, I, I mean, let's ask. I, I'll, I'll, we can, you know, if we don't ask, then <coughs> shame on us. If, if we ask for the money and they don't give it to us, then. Yeah. Right? Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's start, start there and see. Um, Did we ever get the funding um, for Packer for the spit? Uh, we haven't, but uh, that is on the agenda as needing a site visit. I talked to. Um, the house looks great. Yeah, we just have to see how far down they were supposed to clear and how far down it was cleared. I couldn't tell without, I didn't have a plan with me. So um, I talked to Bill Arnberger today and he's going to set up a meeting with the builder and then the property owner and we can... Have, have they put any fill in? Because it didn't look like it. Up on the third it was a pile there today. but Behind the golf course? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The well, they were going to put up the oh. retaining wall. Right, the wall's not up. No. Yeah, but that wall was part of the deal. Yeah. Right. And the excavator who we know mentioned that they're reconsidering what they want to do about the wall. So I said, well, they're going to have to come back to us. So that's why I'd like to go out there and visit and uh, talk yeah. with the... He's going to... Bill's going to email him tomorrow, the builder, and yeah. set up something. So Okay. Um, so the other, uh, a couple, first off, I want to thank everybody that came the other night for, uh, to Mount Hope. That was 
Well, it's good. You know, it was a, it, yeah, I was a good group of people. They're a good group. I just had hoped that well, we had, some outsiders would come, but it was very nice. Yeah. Well, I think the good part was that we had an opportunity to speak to the abutters of the proposed parking areas and talk yeah. about some of that. You guys can see what the concerns are from those folks. Yeah. And um, we'll continue to work with DPW. Carol and I were looking at maybe an alternative site for Bates, but I, I don't see that. I mean, we don't own it. And we'll, we'll take a look. I mean, we're going to take this one more look at um, a site along Clap Road. but. Well, yeah. do, do you know who owns it? Yeah, yeah. So, but maybe sometime, Pat, and I'll have to take a look too, and maybe you're just your good eye as far as like saying, okay, where maybe is this wetlands line? Yes. Because yeah, if you look at the town map, yeah. right, and right. what it shows, there's not much land that's not wetlands either. Yeah. So, sometime you would, maybe you and I can just take huh. a peek and see whether that's even worth pursuing. Okay. And then if it is, we'd have to. Do that, but it's not even for sale. I mean, it's not like. No, I know. So some guy's got a big old barn up there, and it's probably. Why don't we just put the lot up there? We already have it up there. That's the problem. Can we find him? Can no. we? No. Okay. We should be old, paying him. Old eccentric. Using yeah. his land all these years. This has been going on a long time. Uh, and it's fine, but I think. I know. I think but for it's the good fine. of everybody else, it needs to be in the right fine. spot. It's oh, fine. Whatever. Um, but we, I think you know, we can talk, if, if the concerns of the access on um, Bates Lane, I'll be talking with either Kevin or Sean. About the driveway yeah, slope. The driveway yeah, is seems legitimate. Yeah, some, some place to turn around or I, back off can into. Can I just or tell whatever. you, Carl and I used to drive that car up there, and we just pulled off the side. I, I mean, and it was tough. Yeah, you had to watch out for rocks and stuff. Right. And then we maneuver ourselves around, and somebody was coming. with because we we used to take the little alley up there. Huh? Yeah, we'd drive right up because there was no place to park, and I I was not going to park on that road. Right, right. And walk in. Yeah. But we were always take, taking. No, it but I mean, it, it, it's legitimate concerns about how people can get by each other, whether it be going too fast. Can you see someone at the top of the hill? No different than would be asked. Yeah. If. If anything else was done, so we we will address those pieces and and see what we can do. But it was nice, you know. And I did get a couple of emails from some folks that couldn't make it and was wondering what was discussed and if they could help out. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more input. Um, and the DPW has agreed to help us um, do the design, you know, help us with the design pieces. So. That would be good, so hopefully we can start to move forward. I haven't heard any more. We had a meeting with um, the, the um, on the Crosby piece with the engineer and the town's attorney trying to tie up all the loose ends so that hopefully we can get close to passing on, on that piece. It's all been through land court, that's done. Um, just trying to dot some I's, cross some T's, work out a couple of minor issues and then hopefully we're and then we could start with the road yep yep good so that would be real good um with regard to the damon piece of property that's the piece that we're going to be asking the town to acquire a town meeting it's 48 gets we had a couple of discussions with the board of selectmen they had not endorsed they were not voting for the project immediately there was some discussion about whether or not there would be the possibility of maybe putting a playground or ball fields on part of that property. Um, we met with the owner of the property who was adamant that that's not what they would agreed to sell the property to the town for, that mm -hmm. they wanted it to would remain it. wooded. Yep. And that was the wishes of her family, and they, that's the condition. Mm -hmm. The condition and they're selling it to the town at a considerable discount. Um, if you looked at that based on what it could be sold for as a development, and, uh, but we have agreed that we will take up discussions with Rec and see what other alternatives there are. Um, Booty baseball field. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, perfect place for paintball. Throw that out there, Bill. 
no. the 30 inch oak is uh, home. <laughs> the 20 inch pine is first. And they'll learn their trees and. Curveball. Yeah. Um, so, at any rate, we're going to keep working to that end, hopefully, to come up with something that will work. Um, I think it's important that there's a whole bunch of different boards and, and uh, organizations in town, and everybody's got to try to figure out a way to accommodate one another if we can. Mm -hmm. um, Stockbridge Landing Appeal. The uh, DEP, they had two choices. They could have just um, dismissed our appeal because um, based on the Wetlands Protection Act, um, it was already a final amended order. But because of the drinking water argument, they've decided to have us try to work things out with the developer and his engineer. So we're using John Chessier, and we're going to try to sit down again and look at where we can maybe even move some of these detention basins or raise the elevations or do something like that. So we have uh, a month to do that, and then we have to file again with DEP, and then they may call us back in, or they may say you've worked it out. So, and it's all based on the zone A, so. But you had some pretty good experience when you were out there with the, um, Yeah, with Bruce from, from the drinking water side, right, Bruce Bulk, right. He's dealing with tributaries yeah. and whatnot. Right. He's saying it's absolutely a zone A, and uh, now we need some specific recommendations of what to do to protect it, like what engineering-wise would work here. So that's the next step. Did they seem as though they wanted to work with you, the owners? Um, it wasn't their first choice. They were hoping to have it dismissed, but they're seeing the way it's going to go, so I think they're willing to. Okay. And the guy who's buying the whole thing, right now he's got to purchase and sale. He wants it to get fixed. So it's the original owner whose more time is more money, and it's just a lot of headaches for him. Well, let's do it right. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So it was pretty good hearing. It was very interesting to go in there. It was a lot of legal stuff. Jim Toomey was very good in the meeting, too. Oh, good. So uh, and then we were in there yesterday on 305 uh, Country Way, and uh, we had issued a determination of applicability, it was appealed, DEP ruled in favor of us, and then that was appealed. So yesterday the property owner, the abutter, was appealing DEP's decision, and they basically said the RDA stands and the ORAD that was issued a, couple, a year or so ago also stands, but he has until April 5th to either drop everything or try to find some other way to address the whole issue without looking at the ORAD. April 5th or 15th? 5th, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two weeks. yeah. So I think it's, it's looking like his best approach is to go back to town hall and approach it through a drinking water, water resource area, but not appeal our decision. It would be, I mean, if you want to try to expand the area that's protected, that's legitimate, but you can't do it under the well of protection. So, but I don't think anything further will slow down a development there. If, he, if this gets ruled by the fifth, they may be able to go ahead with it. Um, the other one in the water area is Old Open Bucket, uh, where a diversion mm -hmm. uh, ditch was. Um, there's another meeting coming up on that. I guess what happened was, the, the history of it is, the bog area in that pond was part of a tributary that led to the drinking water supply. And then with all the bad um, fertilized chemicals that are put in the bog, they said, let's divert that away from there so it doesn't go to our drinking water supply. But every time it rained and overflowed, some would still get there. So the diversionary trench and wall was rebuilt, and we thought that that would take care of it. But um, there's been a call to bring the water person back out there again and take a look at it to make sure there are no other tributaries that go over there. It comes into play because there's a proposed three lots being built along Bog, and if this is a tributary, uh, septics and everything may have to be a couple hundred feet away. So it's complicated, but I think DEP water people will decide whether it is or it isn't a tributary. So. 
I'm getting to know this guy pretty well. He's been out here for <laughs> three projects in a row. Um, 228 Central Ave, this is the um, perpendicular walls on Central Ave coming out. And, um, Did you take them down yet? No, he had, he had an open order of conditions for other work, but this wasn't on there, so we wrote him a letter. He's in Florida, so I said, you, know, you can't leave them up. You can apply for an amendment or an order, but um, the way it is now, you just can't go ahead and build walls. Um, and it did not prevent what, well, water still comes between the two properties. It's just in front is where he's stopping it. And who knows if that's something that well, we have in the end. Foundation. On the house. Right, side. right, right. He also has a number up, a DEP number that doesn't yeah. have all the numbers. Doesn't have all it. the numbers, right. right. So, yeah, that's. Which makes you wonder if he has a number. Yeah, I know he has an open, open file, but, um, yeah. Um, Oceanfront, the dune area, was anybody else not able to find that? I, I found it, but I know Elise was out there. And I, I went around and around. I, I took pictures. I said, I think this is where yeah, you sent me. It was. <laughs> It's not easy to describe. It's not like a house number you can well, find. But I followed your dune. directions. I'm like, yeah. all right, I went here, I went here, I went here, and it was like, it was yeah. just this like 15 foot, like somebody had plowed up sand. I was like, I couldn't even crowd there to see if it was a vacant lot. Yeah. So I was like, well, this is on the um, inland side of oceanfront. It's not on the ocean side. It's uh, a person who called and said he's owned. Family owned the property for a long time, they never built on it. And it's a lot, he thinks it's buildable, and he says he lives nearby, he just wants to come down and park there. And whenever he parks on Oceanside, he either gets moved along or gets a ticket. So he wants to carve something out of the dune, and I said, well, you can't yeah. carve into a coastal dune to do this. And uh, I said, so, you know, if, do you have a buildable lot here and have you tried anything else? Do you have any old orders or conditions or anything? Or is there another spot that you could use? And so I'm waiting to hear back from him. But his, the message is you can't carve out a dune for a parking spot. I mean, he could he could this file. This is where I was. He denied he could appeal, but, right. but he does have a right to file. So I drove down With the street. Dress. Okay. That may not be to it. Then. So this was what was ahead of me. Yeah, that was no, this. And, and then this is the house on the right. And oh. So I no, I, I no. it's neither of those. Uh, okay. Good try. <laughs> yeah. I try. I tried. It was like yeah, click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, it's ocean fronts, but could be ocean or ocean well, side. But well, there's two of them down there. Yeah. Yeah, it's double header. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Were you able to? I didn't see it. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I think can we just need to go with you. If, if you go all the way to the end of river, right? Yeah. Then there's that dirt road that swings around by. Oh, no. That's all about. Right, facing Marshfield. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, then the road curves around, right. and then it becomes ocean front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You're going up ocean front. It's going to be on your left, the last lot before you hit the street. I know what street. you're saying, but I don't remember seeing it. Okay. Yeah. So if you get to a paved street, you've gone too far. And if you dead end, you've gone too far. It's where you can take a left. Mm -hmm. but, and so you're saying it's on that corner because I, I sat is. there with my car because then you take a left and you come out to old, the and old mouth. The front of the beginning of old yeah, mouth, it's like right. three houses down and you're at that corner again. Isn't it, you, don't you go back to river? No. Uh, it goes to old mouth first old and mouth then first, to river. Old mouth first, then to river. Yeah. So I'm like. Maybe so it's further down, but it's anyways. <laughs> I found it, Mr. Murphy's lot. So, but they're out of town, and I've called them and said, you know, call us back. You, you. I mean, you have a right to file, but you know, I'd be saying, you know, you can't cop out a dune to put a parking spot. So, okay. Um, lot 57 Crescent. The engineers are talking, and I spoke with um, the builder. He came in. Somebody was under the impression they could direct the water toward the street. And public works is saying they can't direct it there. So some other kind of arrangements for water on the site have to take place. Um, 18 Country Way, that house still has that pipe going out to the stream. They, they seem to have taken it back where it's in the yard now. When I went by a few weeks ago, I really? before they stopped, I could see 
I told you I went there, right? Yeah. And I, and I went down in the crawl space, and the guy, I mean, he's got a sump pump. It's, yeah. For whatever reason, it's got some iron residue, so when it, it's yeah. staining with iron, but it's, yeah. it's a sump pump that's in it. But he, if you could put it into just a crushed stone area, I mean, and let it infiltrate a little, you I'll know? I'll back again tomorrow, but I could have swore that it was in the middle of the yard now. Really? It, it was Last week it was out. It looked like it went all the way to the stream, Ooh. but maybe they've moved it this week. Yeah. I'll take a ride so. down. Yeah, you can't, you can't dump directly into a, no, a herring run stream. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Right. right. Well, if, you know what? If, if, if it's still poking out in the thing, then let Pat know. Send him a letter. Yeah, because we haven't sent, they haven't received the letter because we didn't know it was, an, it was a rent time. We've all talked. Yeah, but the yeah. owner lives right next door. We've talked to him okay. about it. Okay. If it's out there, then just. Cut, yeah. Cut it there. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. I'll, I'll put it into. Yeah, okay. It. But in the letter, if you can cite what his violation is, and then. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, 14 Irving is one. They're looking for a certificate of compliance. It's Which right Irving? there. Uh, this is the same one, the Hummer Rock. The Hummer Rock oh. one. Uh, this is, I think, somebody was out there with me. It's a real high house. It's. Mm -hmm. Two or I three went with you last year. Yeah, and it's one of those ones with certificate of compliance, but there's like ten things to check. So if I, you know, if I go out, if I had another set of eyes or two, we could figure it out. Because as, as long as it's within the next week, it's fine. Yeah, last thing we went out there was just a kid that was home, like a nine-year-old kid, and I said, you know, we'll come back sometime when you. If you want parents, can you reach the people or something? Let them know you're coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with you. Okay, so that that one and the other one we could check out while we're out there is the oceanfront dune, and uh, and then if you want to look at Five Irving, which is right down the street. Okay, and then Five Thirteen First Pass Road, right across the intersection here, they're looking for a certificate of compliance, and uh, this is close to a wetland. It's right across from Jim Lomborg's property. Oh, jeez, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah yeah, so this one, um, the plan and, and the site conditions look a little different. The uh, diff distances, the size of the yard and all that. Did they also, part of their thing was to build a basin or something, they, they right? They did do the basin. Yes, yeah, out by the street. Over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. out yeah, by the street. Yeah. Interesting poofy hair, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so that one's going to, uh, I mean, I'll send a letter. We can't. We, I think it is. Uh, I took. I, did they send us? It's probably 20 feet. Out did you ask them to have? Zone. Did you ask them to have an, their engineer certify that it was done? They sent in the request. It probably had an as-built request in there. Yeah, I don't have it. From the engineer, do we have a letter saying that it complies or it does? Uh, substantially complies, I think, is what it said. You know, it's one of those where they put in the basin, but I think the yard is expanded, and I think the bushes that were planted are, you know, further right. away. But well, well go that on. was a tough, you know what, that, we, we had quite a, I wouldn't say contentious hearing, but we certainly had a pretty thorough hearing, and it was very tight to the wetlands, and we made it quite clear when they would get in that condition that they could only go so far. So yeah. if they've overstepped that, and then the applicant sold it to somebody else. Right, right. right. So I think the wetlands are a, a lot closer than what the flags show there. There's no change in elevation. I did a couple of soils, and I'm thinking that the wetland is... 12 feet off the edge of that house. So from what I can tell, but it's built, so we just have to make the best of. Well, we ought to take a look at that. If you really think that that's, I mean, not that it's gonna change what's uh, done there, but I mean, I'd like to, I don't even remember who the scientist was that flagged it. Yeah. But if you think it's that far off, I'd like to take a look at that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna be measuring anyway, so yeah, we can right. go out and take well, the audio. Well, let me know when you're gonna right. go. Okay. I, if that's really that bad, I'd like to know who did that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's how you end up choosing wetland people. You right. Look at history. Um, okay. Okay, I think that is. Did you get any update on 140 River? Yes, uh, I think I sent it to you, the copy from the Corps of Engineers. Yeah. They, they have sent the letter. Um, it didn't get returned to them, so they assumed the property owner got it. And there's a lot of conditions, and threats of big fines and everything, so, um, but they're waiting to hear back. And the guy that was on the case for the court was gone, so he's passing it on to somebody else. Did they put time limits on that for a response, Pat? 
Thirty uh, days. Was it thirty? Yeah. What was yeah. the fine? Fifty thousand or something? Fifty five and fifty thousand. Yay! Yeah. That would get you to return yeah, the call. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 I'd be leaving town. Yeah. Right. All right. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of February 3rd. That's right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of February 19th. Second. That's right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now I'd like to make a motion to go home. 